welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Napier, New Zealand. Uh, we missed our cruise in Ahuriri meet last month due to a waterlogged pitch, but the sun's out and we're back. So welcome to Perfume Point. It's a bumper meeting this month because the Hawke's Bay Vintage Car Club has joined the meet in order to raise funds for cancer research. Good for you guys. That also means there are more British and European cars than usual, uh, some of which we've never seen here before, so it's all good. Let's get on with it. Nice Porsche. The first car to catch my attention after the Porsche coming in through the gates was this 1946 Armstrong Siddeley Typhoon. Beautiful car with a 1900cc engine and as the gent standing beside me said, just so British. It's very British. This brown and cream car is a 1922 Essex Roadster with a 3 litre engine. For those who don't know, Essex was a brand produced between 1918 and 1922 and from 1922 until 1933 by the Hudson Motor Car Company. So as this one's a 1922, I guess it was right at the end, just before Essex were taken over by Hudson. Now this red car is a 1937 Buick sedan with a 4.1 litre engine. Absolutely beautiful and as you can see has a gorgeous interior. I really like that. It really looks like it would be a nice place to be. This blue and black car is a 1926 Chrysler Tourer. Sorry to interrupt the video, but if you're enjoying it, we need your help. All we're asking is for you to take just a second to hit the subscribe button and also do the same with the like button. Thank you, we do appreciate your support. Now, back to the video. This was from a time when Chrysler were attempting to compete with Ford's pricing on their Model T and shortly the new Model A. So they tried to move up market a little, so the dashboard had a few more dials than you might expect in the equivalent Ford. It's a lovely old car. It's a 2.6 litre straight six, as you would expect from this period. Now I'm getting afraid the owner of this Jaguar XK8 might think I'm stalking him because every month it's at this show and every month I go over and look longingly at it. Uh, there's still a for sale sign in the window. Let's just have a look. Is there a price on there? Yes, $15,000. Uh, oh, I don't know. No, probably not. But I do love it. Now, I didn't intend to look at this one, but once I was up close, it kind of grabbed my interest. It's the 2010 Lexus SC430 Coupe. This one has a 4.3 litre petrol engine, obviously a convertible. It's just rather nice. Um, I'm not sure whether I should like it or not. What do you think? Certainly not a British classic car, but yeah, I can see the appeal. And of course, Lexus have that great reputation. Now, parked beside the Lexus, I had no qualms about this one. I've never been afraid to admit I like a lot of German cars. Uh, this is a 2003 Porsche Boxster. 
It's the 2.7 two-door with a 2.7 litre petrol engine. Great reputation as a driver's car. I think this is the one we saw entering the field earlier. I love it. This one could hardly be more different from the Porsche. It's a 1958 Standard 10. This one has the 800cc engine and we saw and heard it coming into the field earlier with the dog barking in the back. Great fun, very neat little car too. Real credit to the owners. Now this is something that wouldn't normally interest me. I think it was probably down to the colour. It's a 1955 Chevrolet pickup. The model is the 3200, but bizarrely it has a 4.34 cc or 4.34 litre engine. Um, beautiful, beautiful condition. Amazing thing. Would I want to own one? No, probably not. It's just not my style, but you have to admire the workmanship and the pride. Looking at the footage afterwards, I wished I'd gone over for a closer look at that brown Ford V8 next to this little Austin, but I didn't. So it's a 1932 Austin 7. This is a special, a special sport. Many Austin 7s were given um, bespoke or custom bodies. This one, no exception. The 740cc engine, that will be the side valve, I believe. But uh, if you know better, please let me know in the comments. It's a lovely little thing, fabric body. Neat as a new pin, lovely little dashboard there. Clearly great fun to drive and to own. Next up, this Mark V Ford Cortina 2 litre gear. It's the uh, 1.998cc engine. Not a car I would usually be excited about, but it's in such fantastic condition. Look, it's even got the vinyl roof. No, I didn't go wobbly with the camera. I meant to show you that. Um, not excited by the typical 80s dash. It's just straight lines, but that's how it was at that time. But really, overall, this car is in fabulous condition. One of the best Cortinas I've seen. So good on you whoever owns that one, it looks great. Next to the Cortina, this 1957 Austin A35. The um, flowers around the headlamps, that's to do with the Vintage Car Club Cancer Collection, so good on them. This one was driven on the day by my friend Leanne, she borrowed the car and it was in fantastic condition. Just look at the interior here, lovely. My eye was taken by this Jag XJ 4.2, it's a 1978. I really like the colour. Um, I showed my footage to someone to get their opinion and they hated it. Oh well, each to their own. Works for me. When your classic car cover is coming up for renewal, try our club scheme arranged with Peter James Insurance. It offers great rates and a range of exclusive benefits including free salvage retention, and multi-vehicle options. Just click the link in the description below to get a quote. After the white car there, this pale blue Ford Cortina is a 1968 Mark II 1600. I remember my father traded his Mark I, which I loved, in for one of these when I was a kid. And I confess I was disappointed by the styling. All those interesting curves and shapes had gone. But that was the fashion of the day. The dash still looks familiar even now. Look at the registration plate, Sun 59. Very appropriate given the weather. Of course, this is a 1959 Sunbeam Alpine. And as you'll see here at the top of the windscreen, a row of daffodils, showing that this is another of the cars brought along by a member of the Hawke's Bay Vintage Car Club to raise funds for cancer research. Look at the condition of that interior. The whole car is just beautiful and a lovely dash too. Really impressive. Next up, this Capri 2.8 Injection 1982. Uh, not a car that's ever appealed to me, but I know they're popular, so we had a quick look round it. Apologies for the shadows, by the way. That's the late winter sunshine here in Hawke's Bay. And beside the Capri, the Morris 1100. We've seen this one at this show before. Really quite tidy. 
And now to my car of the day. This is a 1928 Alvis 1250 with a little 1600cc engine. Absolutely gorgeous. Amusingly, I heard someone asking the owner what was special about it, and he said, well, it's original. I'd have said being 96 years old is enough to make a car special, wouldn't you? Now this car was my runner-up for car of the day. It's a beautiful 1964 Rover 110, 2.6 litre engine. And I looked all over it and it seemed to be absolutely perfect inside and out. Stunningly beautiful. Here looking lovely in the sunlight, a very tidy little Austin A40 Farina. One of the best examples I've seen. Just look at that engine bay, you could almost eat your dinner from it. Really nice. I was quite taken with this dark red stag, but as there was a lady in the passenger seat, I decided not to point the camera in her face. Ah, oh, now look at the little blue car coming in behind the Capri. Some of you in the UK will probably think this is a Hillman Minx, but they were sold down under as a Humber. Uh, this is a 1954 Humber 10. Now according to the registration plate, this blue car with the white stripe is a 2004 Mazda MPV station wagon. I'd have said it was an AC Cobra. Still, it's very sexy either way. I do like the dash. Whether that's real carbon fibre or just a, something you peel and stick on, I don't know, but it's looking good. Certainly not a classic car, but certainly grabbing my attention, this very sexy looking sports car is a 2018 McLaren 570S. It has the 3.8 litre petrol engine. Quite stunning. blue car coming up there is a 1968 Pontiac Firebird 400. This one has the six and a half litre petrol engine. Uh, it caught my eye because of the name really. The Americans really knew how to name their cars. Pontiac Firebird. Sounds so much more exciting than, I don't know, Morris Oxford. No disrespect to the Morris Oxford, but I hope you get what I mean. And 
here looking really good in yellow in 1978 Triumph 2500 Next up a pair of Alvises. The first is a 1952 TA21 looking really good in the red on silver and a very attractive interior colour scheme like the cushions too. And beside it this darker coloured one, same year, same model, different interior, both beautiful cars. You may remember I met the owner some months ago, he said he had 14 of these. And in my opinion, it's easy to see why. This one's a regular at the show, the Vauxhall Viva HC. I really like this car, though I read online recently that it's seen as an unpopular model. I can't imagine why. I know the owner is a young chap and good on him for keeping it going. Looking stunning in the morning sunshine is this green 1954 Triumph TR2. This has an 1800cc engine. This white saloon is a Rover P6. It's the 1975 of the uh, 3.5. So it has the Buick 3.5 litre V6 engine. Much modified and improved by Rover's engineers, of course. Very nice too. Once again, you'll spot some yellow flower sunflowers in the back on the parcel shelf. Thanks to bringing it along as another member of the Hawke's Bay Vintage Car Club. Now on the end of this row of Morris Miners is this very attractive early model. Uh, this one has the, I think it's the original Morris engine, which only produced 29.5 bhp. Later on, um, the Austin A-Series engine was fitted, which upgraded it to 48 bhp. Such a nice interior. I love the upholstery and the dash, which of course changed substantially on later miners. And you get the very large central speedometer that we're all used to. Ah, I love the sign. Morris parking only. One for you, Robbie Bothwell. And a really nice split screen moggy there too. And there you can see the later dash design that's more familiar that we're all used to from the later models of the Mogi. Love that Austin wavy grille at the front of this Austin A40 Farina. Just looking inside, you can see a very distinctive dashboard. I don't know whether they did any variants on that metal dash. Um, the front seats are in situ and then there's nothing behind. Not sure what's going on there, but it's all in one piece and obviously still drivable. And a quick passing glimpse for any fans of the Datsun 280Z. This one's a 1981 with the 2.7 litre engine. Beside it, Ford Cortina. This is the deluxe model. Looking very good. And of course another Capri. Oh, and here we can get a look inside the Humber that we saw earlier. Now staying with the Roots Group, we have this lovely 1965 uh, Singer Vogue. 1600 cc engine and it's just in beautiful condition the owner george was a proud man uh, he showed me the dashboard the original radio and was really just happy to talk uh, i do owe george an apology i was supposed to be recording an interview with him unfortunately my own mistake i mucked up the settings on my camera and lost the video sorry about that We're reaching the end of the video, but before I wrap up, this is my friend John, who told me he had his classic Saab nearby. He offered to go and show me, which we did. Unfortunately, I've mucked up the camera again and uh, lost the audio and the proper version of the video. 
Sorry about that, John. You told me some fascinating stuff about your sub, and I lost the lot. Maybe again sometime, if you don't mind doing it again. Meanwhile, thank you for watching. Please give us a like or a subscribe or even a comment, and uh, come back next month for another video from Perfume Point.